Hello, and welcome. Today, we have a special video to discuss how the gaming industry has changed over the years, why modern games seem less engaging to many players, and how emulation has played a key role in preserving and revitalizing classic games. Additionally, we'll explore how emulation might even contribute to increased sales of new games. If you, like me, have bought a latest generation graphics card or a modern console like the Xbox Series or PlayStation 5, you've probably noticed that despite these consoles being on the market for nearly four years, they still lack a significant number of games that really stand out or are must-play titles. If you check Metacritic for the best PS5 games, for example, you'll see that many of them are remakes, remasters, or even ports from previous generations. Among them, we have The Witcher 3, the remake of Resident Evil 4, Demon's Souls, and even Persona 5, which originally came out for the PlayStation 3. These games, while great, aren't exactly new and reflect the lack of truly innovative releases for the current generation. Now, if we compare the PlayStation 5 with the PlayStation 2 during the same four-year period after its launch, the difference is stark. The PlayStation 2 had a host of memorable and innovative titles like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, GTA Vice City and San Andreas, Resident Evil 4, Metal Gear Solid 2, Gran Turismo 3, Burnout 3, and many more. The list of amazing and impactful games from that era is long and shows the creative richness of that generation. On the other hand, today we see many games that, despite getting million-dollar investments, have questionable quality or are heavily focused on microtransactions, excessive monetization, and DLC content, rather than focusing on providing a complete and immersive experience. A recent example is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, developed by Warner Brothers, which has access to a variety of DC superheroes but failed to meet fans' expectations. The same Warner Brothers that has well-established franchises like Mortal Kombat, Middle-Earth, and even Mad Max at its disposal. The gaming industry has undergone a series of changes in recent years. On the one hand, we see impressive technological advancements and a growing recognition of games as works of art, with complex storylines, spectacular graphics, and immersive experiences. On the other hand, there are troubling signs of a crisis, with layoffs at game studios, a lack of creativity, and a disconnect between what players want and what developers deliver. Recently, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, commented on the crisis affecting the gaming industry. One reason for this crisis is the lack of creativity in modern games. We've seen highly anticipated titles disappointing the public, like the latest Saints Row, which seems to have deviated from the irreverent and chaotic style the series was known for, introducing ideological elements that did not resonate with its target audience. This created a sense of frustration among players who just wanted to have fun without worrying about political messages. Additionally, Microsoft recently requested, in the Xbox Code of Conduct documents, that developers avoid the sexualization of women. Although this is a complex and delicate issue, we can't ignore that many players prefer strong and visually appealing female characters, like Bayonetta, Lara Croft, and the protagonist of Stellar Blade. This doesn't necessarily imply objectification or disrespect, as there are also male characters like Dante from Devil May Cry who are highly stylized and don't offend anyone. Many people who invest time and money in games are becoming increasingly dissatisfied with what the industry offers. As an example, if all new games stopped being released today, I would still have a huge number of older titles to play for the rest of my life. We are living in an interesting time in the world of gaming, where games are increasingly recognized as works of art. It's exciting to see this shift in perspective, especially since more people are interested in exploring games from the past. For instance, teenagers between 15 and 20 years old are discovering classic titles like Super Mario World after playing Super Mario Wonder on the Nintendo Switch. They want to understand how the platform evolved to what we have today. Similarly, Pokemon fans who capture rare creatures in older games can transfer them to the latest games, continuing their adventures. That's where emulators come in. If you've played Super Mario 3D All-Stars and found yourself fascinated by Super Mario Galaxy, you're likely interested in finding out how the story continues, since the sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2, has yet to receive a remastered version and remains exclusive to the Nintendo Wii. Hunting down a well-preserved Wii console with all the accessories, like controllers and sensors, can be quite a challenge. 
Even if you find one, the graphical quality might not meet modern screen standards. With emulators, you can play Super Mario Galaxy 2 without the need to purchase a Nintendo Wii or its required accessories. They let you relive classic games with improved graphical quality, giving them a fresh lease on life. This is why emulators have become an essential tool for those who wish to explore the rich history of gaming and dive into the classic adventures that have shaped the industry. With a moderately spec PC, even with hardware that's 10 years old, you can enjoy Super Mario Galaxy 2 in full HD resolution, with anti-aliasing filters and even updated texture packs that give the game a more modern look. Additionally, there's the convenience of storing multiple games on a single device, allowing you to play on multiple platforms without needing different controllers or cables. You won't have to swap wires behind or beside your TV every time you want to try out a different console. Before we move on, I'd like to know your opinion. Do you think the channel should cover this type of video, discussing topics related to the gaming industry? If the answer is yes, I have other interesting stories to share, like the fall of Atari and the famous case where they buried thousands of copies of the E.T. the extraterrestrial game. Leave a comment on what you think about this idea. And if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. If this is your first time here, welcome, and we hope to see you in the next videos. Emulators offer a unique experience, especially if you like playing with decent quality. If you prefer original consoles because you think emulators might be slow or experience frame drops, trust me, these issues are rare, and in many cases, you won't even notice a difference. With emulators, you can, for example, speed up the gameplay to quickly move through an area in a Pokemon game or enjoy faster load times, custom save states, physical space savings, as you won't need to store a large collection of physical games, retro achievement features, and even play your favorite titles on your Android or iPhone while waiting at a doctor's office. There's really no reason not to take advantage of everything emulation offers. Whether you're a beginner who just wants to play an old game with ease or a veteran seeking to relive the same experience you had on your Super Nintendo. You might be wondering about the legality of all this. The legality of emulators and ROMs varies from country to country. In Brazil, for example, having copies of games is not necessarily illegal, unless you're using them for profit by selling them. Therefore, check the laws in your country to be sure. Generally speaking, like in the case of Super Mario Galaxy 2, which does not currently have an official version available, downloading a copy for personal use might not be a problem. 3DS games like Pokemon X and Y are also in a similar situation since the online service for the console was discontinued this year. However, if you appreciate a developer and the work they've done in the past, supporting them by buying new games is a good way to encourage them to continue creating quality content. Finally, it's always good to try new things. For example, I had never played any Kirby or Smash Brothers games until this current generation. After trying out an older game from these franchises, I found myself interested in the newer titles, and now I'm a fan. This shows how playing an older title, often considered abandonware, can lead to rediscovery and even boost sales of newer games in the franchise. Plus, it's a great way to test different genres and game styles to find out which ones truly suit you before investing in the latest releases. And that's the video folks. If you enjoyed this type of content, which is more like a casual chat, don't forget to hit the like button on the video. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.